So by the end of the first act, I'm thinking, am I am I meant to be rooting for Cruella de Vil to skin all of these puppies that don't have bodies, which goes some of the way towards explaining why she needs 101 of them to make a coat. Oh my god, hey! Welcome back to my stage YouTube channel. If you are seeing my face for the first time, my name is Mickey Joe, and I am obsessed with all things theatre. I'm also a freelance theatre critic and a content creator based here in the UK, and this is my stage YouTube channel, where I review shows that I've been invited to see here in the UK, and I talk about news and gossip and drama all over the world. If I'm sweating throughout this video, it is both because A, still very warm in the UK, and B, I am palpably nervous to talk about this one, because on Friday night, I was invited to go and see 101 Dalmatians, the new musical adaptation of the book, which was premiering at Regent's Park Open Air Theatre. This is one of my favourite theatres of all time. I was so excited to be invited to review. I was reviewing for whatsonstage.com, which I've done a little bit of recently, but it's still very exciting to me every time it comes around. And I just had really high expectations. I really wanted to love this production, even though it is not the Disney version. I am a huge Disney fan. I'm a big fan of Timothy Sheeda, the director, who is also the artistic director of this venue. And I just had such hope that this was going to be a magical, enchanting night of theatre. Unfortunately, it did not quite go that way, and I wrote my review for What's On Stage, and because of how the timing worked out with a Friday night press night, my review was published the next morning, and all of the big newspapers did not publish theirs straight away, because they are not at work over the weekend. So my rather negative review appeared on whatsonstage.com, and people were not pleased about it. People thought that I was bashing the show harshly and unfairly. Someone said I wasn't particularly impartial. I have no idea why. I have no vested interest in 101 Dalmatians. I was accused of basically not supporting the arts and uplifting a new show at a very challenging time, which I respect and which I understand. However, supporting the arts has to mean more than simply praising everything. Where I see a show that I think could be improved in very many ways, I am going to address those and I'm going to talk about them. And that is what I like to think you have come to appreciate and respect on my channel. So today I am going to be addressing the controversy of my review, discussing a little bit of the backlash and giving you my full YouTube review of 101 Dalmatians. If you want to go and read the Watson Stage review that started all of the drama I am currently enjoying on social media, you can find that on watsonstage.com or on Showscore. As a reminder, Showscore is a new website that's just launched in the UK. You can subscribe to my profile on there automatically by clicking on the link down below in the description or the pinned comment, and you'll be able to keep up to date with all of my reviews. And you can also create a profile to write your own reviews of all the shows that you've seen there as well. When I write for Watson Stage, fun fact, it's around 500 word limit that they usually like to see in their reviews. So what I'm going to bring you here is actually probably going to be a much more detailed description of my thoughts of the show. So I ended up giving this two stars on what's on stage, which people saw and were just shocked by. And it's not often that I give out a two star review. If you've watched enough of these on my channel, you will see I very rarely give out a two star review. I consider three stars to be fine, average, adequate, fulfilling the necessary criteria for entertainment, and two stars has to be actively bad, like something has gone wrong, mistakes have been made that have impaired its ability to entertain and fulfill its objectives. So I do think this was a two-star show. And since my review came out, The Guardian have now published their review, and Arifa the critic there also gave the show two stars. So I do feel a teensy bit vindicated that it's not just me hating needlessly on 101 Dalmatians. Because really, I'm a dog person. Honestly, that's the biggest irony of all of this. So let me tell you why, with a sort of big picture overview. The show, at its very best, is charming. But the main problem that I have with it is we don't have an obvious protagonist, nor much with which to form an emotional connection. And from this point onwards, the video is going to be littered, haha, <laughs> with references to the show's plot and some spoilers. So if you don't want to know any of those, I mean, it's not a big departure from the film, but if you don't want to know specifically what happens in the stage production, then you're going to want to watch the show and then come back to this later. So to give you some idea of how they actually bring this to the stage, they have dog puppets that function not unlike the zebras 
or some of the animals in The Lion King, where their heads and their torsos and their front paws are all puppets, and their back legs are created by the legs of the performers who voice the dogs. Yes, the dogs speak. Get into it. And they are wearing Dalmatian print trousers, which is novel and which really gives the dogs a personality and connects them to the performers. It kind of looks like the performers are standing behind the dogs at an inappropriately sexual height. You know, that was pointed out to me. I didn't see that straight away, but after it was pointed out to me, I could not unsee it, unfortunately. I'm sure the kids won't notice that. And all of the Dalmatian puppies are basically severed puppet heads and tails that are just kind of held separately to give the vague illusion of a puppy over here and over there. And obviously there are a lot of them in the show. Fun fact, when the most puppies were on stage, I counted 90 and then there were an additional three that were pointed out. And Aaron, who was with me, also counted 90. Now that's suspicious to me. But at the same time, do I feel like they were gonna make 93 puppies and then not make the extra eight? That seems silly. After you've made that many puppies, you'd think, let's just make all the puppies. Or did they think, you know what? No one's gonna count these puppies. We'll just make 93 puppies. Someone in the comments said I was being mean-spirited for trying to count the actual number of puppies. I was always going to do that. As soon as I found out they were staging 101 Dalmatians, I was like, I will find out whether or not there are 101 puppies on that stage because that's just the kind of attention to detail person I am. But circling back to my issue, it is hard to form a connection with the puppy puppets. At the very end of the show, Cruella de Vil's hapless henchmen bring out a real life Dalmatian puppy and everyone loses their entire minds, including myself. I start producing a sound so high that only the dog itself can actually hear it, but it does then make me think, oh, this is the first time I've actually been invested emotionally in anything that's happening on the stage simply because there's an adorable puppy. It throws the rest of the evening very sharply into contrast when that moment happens. And you can hear an audience response at that moment that is so far above any response that's been heard up to that point. I have the same issue with the human protagonists. We do not spend nearly enough time with them developing their characters because the attention is very much split between them as a couple and their dogs as a couple, which is a cute feature, the way that it parallels, but it does undercut our ability as an audience to really get invested in their lives or their relationship. Both of the relationships happen so fast. It's this very obvious wink, wink, love at first sight moment that is then just an instant, oh, we are now a family all living together. But it means the only character that actually gets developed and actually gets an agenda and an objective and exploration and a backstory and a motivation is Cruella de Vil. So by the end of the first act, I'm thinking, am I, am I meant to be rooting for Cruella de Vil to skin all of these puppies that don't have bodies, which goes some of the way towards explaining why she needs 101 of them to make a coat? So the design of the show I actually really enjoyed. I've spoken about the puppy puppetry and, you know, there were some benefits to this. It created the illusion of a puppy. It was very clever the way that it was done because it's a challenging feat to bring that many puppies onto a stage. I can't pitch you an alternative of a better way to have done it, but it was a little bit odd that the puppies had no bodies, that the adult dogs had the whole thing with the humans with the back legs. The scenic design I thought was fantastic. It was a very versatile set. It basically had the title 101 Dalmatians in movable letters that moved around to create different locations. That was very clever. I liked that when they then brought out another set piece in the second act to form this cage, it was made up of different letters as well. I like consistency in an aesthetic across a set design. I like attention to detail. And I liked the colors that they used as well, using that deep blue and that red. That was very striking and I thought sensible not to just go straight away to black and white. I also liked the costume design. It was very bold in a few places, but Cruella de Vil had some lovely costumes. I really wasn't a fan of the last thing that she wore in the show, but for most of the show, I did like the way that she was dressed. It was very Kate Moss-ish. It was definitely less mid 20th century Cruella de Vil style that you might be more used to from other adaptations. And it was a more modern look. And I had no issue with the staging and I had no issue with the choreography or the lighting or the sound. I thought they did a great job considering it's Regent's Park and it's a very trying and challenging space to actually amplify properly 
a musical. The only creative aspect I had issues with was the material, and it sounds like this is, you know, four out of five things that were done right. You had a good cast, you had a good set, you had good costumes, you had good direction and choreography, but this goes to show how important the material is. Where you have songs that are not especially fulfilling or especially memorable, where you have a book which is the script that isn't particularly meaningful and doesn't forge any kind of an emotional connection with the audience, that's a problem. Some of the lyrics were objectively quite witty, but just as many of them were juvenile to the point of being cringeworthy. And most of this hung around the fact that Cruella de Vil had been reconceived in this version as a social media influencer. They called her an influencer, when really what they were depicting her as was more of a Katie Hopkins style social media divisive commentator. It wasn't really influencer the way that she behaved and what her goals seemed to be. She was just this very controversial figure who gave this like interview and did this obnoxious little talking head moment of saying like British dogs for British people and saying just these horrible, cruel and controversial things to try and get attention, which we've seen before, but it's not really influencer, so to speak. I also think making the villain an influencer and villainizing influencer culture is such an easy target and such a lackluster and lazy way of reframing a modern villain. Especially when her whole thing is just obvious animal cruelty, which is not a brand that you see on social media, like no one is making a platform off of doing that on Instagram. So I don't even think influencer is really what they meant. But they had so many lyrics of just trying to throw in these social media and influencer buzzwords, talking about incels and cancel culture, and none of it really made sense. You got the sense it was being written by someone who didn't really understand what those words meant and why they didn't apply in the context they were being used. Which is one of my biggest pet peeves at the theatre, when they try and use this terminology and it's not at all accurate. There were also a couple of moments in the show, and this is definitely a red flag for new musical writing, where the songs so specifically reminded me of other songs. Cruella de Vil has a song at the end of the first act called Fear Fur, and it so specifically sounds like Love is an Open Door from Frozen, it's almost suspicious. There's another song called Litterbug that gets reprised a few times that sounds very much like Chitty Chitty Bang Bang. The score's best moments, honestly, are where it has this more sort of folky acoustic sound, but it just doesn't pair well tonally with 101 Dalmatians, at least the tone that I would expect from 101 Dalmatians, because tonally the production is also very confused in terms of where it's aimed at a family audience or a more mature audience, and whether the script is even trying to sound more sophisticated or whether it is just leaning into the pantomime style that it could be perceived as. I did enjoy the performances in this show, but it's one of those where the material can stop you being able to enjoy a performer, and I think it can also stop a performer being able to do their best work. Kate Fleetwood is fantastic as Cruella de Vil. I said in my review that she was born to play musical theatre villainy. She has these amazing sculpted cheekbones, this very intense expression, and she has this amazing piercing high belt, which being more of a dramatic actress, we do not get to hear nearly often enough. I have seen her in a musical before. I saw her in London Road at the National Theatre, but that was a verbatim style musical based on real life speech that had been adapted and musicalized. So it wasn't particularly like Sing Out Louise in the way that she gets to in 101 Dalmatians. So it was really fun getting to hear her, I would say, belt the roof off, but there's no roof to begin with. And she was fun as this obnoxious East London fashionista, Cruella de Vil, but there were just so many holes in the material that she could only do so much with the role. I enjoyed Emma Lucia and Danny Collins, who voiced Perdita and Pongo and helped to puppeteer them as well. They had some nice and charming and whimsical moments throughout the show, and they got to be a little bit funny here and there. The other performers I want to specifically shout out, there are four young performers who play the puppies in the second act. They are not there when the puppies first appear on stage, but these particular puppies get to do a little bit more because they escape from Cruella's clutches in the second act, so they're then voiced by these performers. We have Charlie Mann Evans, Rhea Russellingham, Charlie McGonagall, and Hadley Snow. They were really great, very sweet, very endearing, gave a very confident performance. I really enjoyed them. For me, the material just wasn't strong enough. There were a lot of inconsistencies in tone. I think I kept lamenting for the show I had wanted it to be, where it was set in the original time period when the book was set. I appreciate 
that it was not attached to the Disney property. This was not Disney producing their version of 101 Dalmatians on stage, and because Disney weren't involved, they had to steer completely clear of any references to the animated Disney film. And you may not realize that a lot of the sort of iconography of 101 Dalmatians and Cruella de Vil that you think of when you associate with this story is specifically the intellectual property of Disney and is not inherent within the books. So the way that they depicted Cruella had to be very specific. The names that they gave a lot of characters. In the book, the owners of the dogs are not called Roger and Anita, so those names were not used for this version, which can be a little bit jarring, I understand, but I do think that modernizing it completely wasn't necessarily the way to go, or maybe even that still could have worked with better material. I was not won over by the score, I struggled with the lyrics, they were not of exceptionally high quality, and I find it very difficult to get past this when there are so many new musical composers in the UK who cannot get their work produced. It's a very difficult climate to be a new musical theatre writer in this country. There are just not enough opportunities given for them. And this would have been an amazing opportunity for a new composer to have something at this venue. Regent's Park Open Air Theatre haven't produced a new musical on their stage in decades, namely because, you know, it's a very specific auditorium and what's the right kind of show to premiere in an outdoor setting, 101 Dalmatians being the obvious choice, the first number even references it being specifically in Regent's Park that it's set, and yet Douglas Hodge, who is an actor who also composes a little bit but hasn't really done so in a huge professional capacity, is writing the score, and writes, as far as I'm concerned, a reasonably subpar score that I was not particularly impressed by. It's so not in my nature to be negative, but I do think we have to advocate for these musical theatre composers whose first job it is to write musical theatre scores rather than actors and pop stars who are commissioned or taken upon themselves to start writing for musical theatre. Yes, some of them have done fantastic work, but there are so many neglected voices in the new musical theatre writing community in the UK specifically. I think there is charm within this show, and I think there is the capacity to bring it out even more. I do like the dog puppetry, and that could be a whole selling point of the show, the same way that War Horse and the way that shows like that have been brought to the stage have sold a lot of tickets purely on the spectacle of how the puppetry is done. Maybe as audiences and myself, we have a little bit of puppetry fatigue, so something that used to be very impressive is now not so much. We've seen it in The Lion King, we've seen Marianne Elliott do it in various productions. But consistency is also a big point for me, because you have those performers puppeteering the dogs and voicing them, and then at the most emotional moment of the show, when Emma Lucia as Padita is singing this beautiful ballad, she steps away from the Padita puppet, and she is just a human kneeling there, while the Padita puppet is puppeteered by someone else, and it severs the connection between the two of them. I don't understand the choice there, unless they thought they needed to free her of the constraints of the dog puppet, but then it focuses you on the human and rather than the dog. Equally, there are other breeds of dogs that appear throughout the show that are puppeteered in a similar way, but then you see the humans separately from the dogs or standing next to the dog puppets or sometimes just without the dog puppets. At one point, you see a lot of humans coming on playing dogs, no puppets whatsoever. So where I talk about aesthetics, being consistent throughout and why I love that in the set design, I would have loved the puppetry design by Toby Ollier to also be as consistent. And we need a better protagonist to invest in. There is so much time spent on Cruella. Not that I want any of her material to be taken away. I like that we explored her as much as we did, but she didn't have a huge amount of depth. What she got was just pantomime villainy in these scenes where she would come on and be nasty and it almost wanted you to boo like you were a pantomime audience. So for all my criticisms of 101 Dalmatians at Regent's Park Open Air Theatre, I've seen a lot of comments from people who are not very happy with me because they thought this was a beautiful new musical. They thought it was very charming and very unique and very original, and it is many of those things. It is an original British new musical on a very charming subject, on a story people already know that they will have a fondness for. If you've never been to a show at Regent's Park Open Air Theatre, I would suggest going. I would recommend that you buy a ticket just so you can experience what it's like to see a show in that setting. I think of all the shows I've ever seen there, this is one that works the best because many of its scenes are set in a park, so it's a really good show for that venue. If you're looking for something fun to take kids to as their first experience of theatre, then this would be a magical and enchanting way to expose them to the theatre as well. And I think the nature of the lyrics and the book 
will probably play very well to a younger audience. You have these comedic sidekick characters who don't really want to go along with Cruella, but have to because she's their Auntie C, but they think the puppies are really cute. It's all very pantomime very juvenile, very childlike, which means it may not play that well to a more sophisticated adult audience, but for younger theatre goers, this may be a really big hit. What I really wish they'd do is to have a relaxed canine performance to have an audience of all dogs watching this show. Can you imagine? I think that would be adorable. I just want to see the pictures of just Regent's Park open air theatre, this amphitheatre style seating filled with attentive dogs watching the performance. That would just, ah, oh, my heart can't even comprehend how amazing that would be. But those are some of my thoughts on 101 Dalmatians at Regent's Park Open Air Theatre. You're welcome to go and read my heavily criticised review on what's on stage or via showscore.com. And you're welcome to let me know your thoughts down in the comments section. I'm particularly intrigued to hear from you if you loved this show, if you had a very different opinion to me. Let us know in the comments section why you thought this was a great show, why you loved it, why you enjoyed it, and feel free to share that perspective. I would encourage you all to go and make up an opinion for yourself. I never present these videos in a way that is prescriptive and telling you these are objectively the facts of the situation. Theatre is subjective and this is just my opinion. Thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed. If you did, make sure to subscribe to my Stagey YouTube channel for plenty more theatre content coming very soon about all your favourite shows. If you did enjoy this video and would also like to help me recover from the trauma of being the first dog shot into space with my review having been posted first on the internet, feel free to give me a super thanks down below while I cry in a corner and lick myself. I don't know. What do dogs do? Also, you're welcome to go to patreon.com forward slash Theatre to support me over there as a content creator and also gain access to some exclusive photo and video content. I hope that everyone is staying safe and that you have a stagey day. For 10 more seconds, I'm Mickey Joe Theatre. Oh my god, hey, thanks for watching. Have a stagey day. Subscribe! <laughs>